Humans respond to stress, loss, and adversity in a variety of ways. Many of us have experienced low mood and spirits when faced with a difficulty or a loss. We may lose our sleep, appetite, and may not feel like socializing or meeting people. This change in behavior is a normal human reaction to a stressful situation. As such, a state is transient and goes away in a couple of days. But if symptoms such as low mood, hopelessness, changes in appetite, sleep patterns, loss of interest in hobbies, and edonia, feelings of guilt persist for more than two weeks and negatively affect our social, domestic, and occupational functioning, then it is no more a normal reaction, but a pathological one and may merit a concern for clinical depression. Major depression is extremely common among various societies, and despite being a treatable illness, goes largely undiagnosed due to its insidious nature and the stigma attached to its diagnosis and seeking treatment. Case for Urgency According to the International Global Burden of Disease Study, Major Depressive Disorder, MDD, is the third leading cause of the years lived with disability, YLDs which can be described as years lived in less than ideal health in Pakistan and globally. The socioeconomic burden of mental illness in Pakistan is tremendous, of which MDD contributes significantly and was estimated to be approximately 4,264 million U.S. dollars in the year 2006, according to recent estimates carried out in Pakistan. Severe forms of clinical depression often translate into suicides. According to a report published in 2014, every 40 seconds a person commits suicide. For every person who commits suicide, there are 20 people who attempt ending their lives. Mental illness at large and major depression is particular pose a public health challenge, which calls public health policy institutes and governments to take appropriate steps. Diagnosis, Signs and Symptoms Major depressive disorder is diagnosed on the basis of a set of nine symptoms formulated in the Diagnostics and Statistical Manual, DSM-5, and their context. Five or more of the nine symptoms, including at least one of depressed mood and loss of interest or pleasure, in the same two-week period, and each of the symptoms represent a change from previous functioning. These symptoms include depressed mood, subjective or observed, irritability is more common in teenagers, loss of interest of pleasure, change in weight or appetite, insomnia or hypersomnia, psychomotor agitation, observed, loss of energy or fatigue, feelings of worthlessness or guilt, impaired concentration or indecisiveness, thoughts of death or suicidal ideation and attempt. If there is depression resulting in significant clinical impairment but not meeting the above criteria for major depression, then it is termed as adjustment disorder with depressed mood. This occurs within three months following a stressful life event and does not persist for six months after the termination of the stressor. If there are depressive symptoms occurring within two months of the death of a loved one, then it is considered as normal grief. If symptoms persist beyond two months, then a diagnosis of major depression needs to be explored. Severity Major depression can be mild, moderate, or severe. In mild depression, despite the symptoms, functioning would still be preserved. In moderate depressive illness, the different facets of functioning would be markedly impaired. Whereas, in severe major depression disorder, one may experience an act on suicidal thoughts. In very severe forms, one may even experience hallucinations and delusions accompanying the mood symptoms, which is termed as major depression with psychotic features. Hi there, I am Wally. You may be wondering what I'm doing here. Well, let me start again. I am Wally and I am autistic. For those of you who are not familiar with this term, autistic is a person who suffers from a neurobehavioral condition called autism. But what exactly is autism? Well, it can be a tricky question because autism can be a lot of things. This condition is now being referred to as autism spectrum dysfunction because of its variety and diversity of symptoms. Quite possibly, my autism may be different from another autistic, and that his or her autism may also be different from another autistic, and so on. However, there are three basic symptoms that are observed in all types of autism. Social interaction challenges. Deviant responsiveness and difficulty in communication. 
cognitive dysfunction and insensitivity or oversensitivity to certain stimuli including sight, hearing, smell, taste and touch. Tendency to engage in repetitive behaviour throughout life on a daily basis. It may involve pacing, head rocking and hand flipping etc. Now let me evaluate myself according to these symptoms. I've never felt comfortable in social circles. I don't go out with friends or in gatherings, even though I have nothing else to do, and usually I feel out of place and panic in social gatherings. So first symptom, check. I have trouble assessing how my words or actions will affect the other person psychologically. I have a really bad reputation for being blunt and quite frankly I have no idea why my words can hurt people. Most people tell me that I don't respond when I'm spoken to. I know that they're talking to me, but I feel a lot of background noise, which makes it hard for me to focus on one point during conversations with multiple stimuli involved. Along with that, sometimes I cannot assess the hidden meanings in conversations. For example, if I'm asked to take my seat, I would pick up my seat and ask, where to? So, second symptom, check. Since my childhood, I have a strong tendency for head rocking side to side. It calms me down. I have these episodes daily and, and quite often multiple times in the same day. So third symptom, big check. Enough about me, let's go through some important facts about autism. Autism is known to affect one in every 60 individuals, with boys at five times more risk to be autistic than girls. Quick question, do you think the dominance of autism in males has something to do with their gender, more specifically with the Y chromosome? What causes autism is still unknown. It is believed that a cocktail of genetic, environmental and psychological factors contributes towards autism. Autism is broadly divided into three major types. Classical or Canner's autism, often referred to as severe autism. This type usually covers the low-functioning autism. In this case, autistics have the same but more severe symptoms, along with certain other developmental disorders a very low IQ, loss of cognition, speech, antisocial behaviours and mental retardation in extreme cases. Asperger's syndrome, also called as high-function autism, tends to have the basic symptoms but with low severity, so that the individuals suffering from it have a very good chance of a normal life. Asperger's syndrome has known to be associated with high levels of IQ, with individuals that may lag in certain daily races of life, but are super smart at stuff that appears to be very difficult for smart but non-autistic individuals. These excellency may include problems in science, art, math and music, to name a few. Can you imagine someone who got the highest score in SATs twice, but can't ride a bicycle properly, and gets confused in easy tasks? like opening a push or pull door. The third type, also known as pervasive development disorder, or atypical autism. It usually involves more sociological and behavioural associated deviations, and is a rather less studied type of autism. Another level-based classification is done by the clinicians on the basis of the severity of the symptoms with level 1 autistics requiring minimal clinical support, level 2 requiring mediocre clinical support, and the level 3 autistics requiring maximum clinical support. No matter the type of autism, the symptoms start to manifest within the first three years after birth. As hopeless as it may seem, there is no substantial cure for autism. Physicians sometimes recommend antidepressant medications with physical and mental training sessions for the autistics to adapt to the normal world, but none of these therapies have shown 100% efficiency. In my opinion, autism is just a different way to perceive our reality. We just process the stimuli around us differently than others, and that can be a promising statement to develop an efficient therapy to treat severe forms of autism. A team at UCLA is already working on this project where they have seen that just by changing the stimuli of observable reality, the autistic features can be normalised. So you see, we're not sick or have a disease, we're just different and I believe that whatever makes you different makes you special. And I believe that I have been bestowed with this amazing gift called autism. Think I'm crazy? If you are autistic, just ask yourself. 
How many times have your anti-boredom painting turned out to be a masterpiece? How many times the instrument you play just to calm yourself has mesmerized the others around you? Moreover, how many times have you raised your hand and solved a problem that others can only dream of solving? Don't believe me yet? Some autistics have superpowers in the form of Savant Syndrome in which they can do supercomputerized calculations in their minds, like guessing the exact day on a specific date a thousand years from now. In other cases, they have a super strong short and long-term memory, due to which they can memorize numerous facts, patterns and details with clinical precision. Still don't believe me? Do you know what relates Isaac Newton, Mozart, Charles Darwin, Nikolai Tesla, Albert Einstein? It's autism. Yeah. You heard me right. They're observed to be showing symptoms that can be closely related to Asperger's. Each and every one of them revolutionized our world in ways that were never thought before. Yes, this world is a tough place. Every day, like my autistic brothers and sisters, I have to struggle hard to pretend to be normal. Every day, there are a lot of people who remind me constantly of the failure I am as a man. Every day, I hurt a lot of people unwillingly. But still, every new day surprises me with the new talents I possess, the new frontiers I can pursue, and with every fight, I become stronger and more resilient. For all those out there like myself, stop judging yourself by what you are not and start defining yourself by what you are. Remember, it is your imperfections that make you what you are. And you are amazing. You have the power to make this life a beautiful adventure. Those who try to imprison you by their so-called standards of perfection are just ignorant. And it is our responsibility to educate them. For those who have people like me around them, hug them whenever they panic. Hugs give us a sense of abundance and fulfillment and is scientifically proven to calm autistics. From me, to all the autistics around the world, I feel your pain and I accept you all for who you are because I have embraced myself for what I am. If being abnormal makes me special, then this abnormality is a blessing. I'm an autistic and this is my story. Suppose you are chatting with your friend in a park. He or she is talking about a topic you just cannot stand. In fact, you are not even mentally present there and you are often not in touch with the reality. This may mean you may be suffering from a personality disorder known as schizophrenia. Symptoms include catatonia, delusion, hallucinations, lack of hygiene awareness and much more. Schizophrenia is a personality disorder which is more common in males than in females. A person with such a disorder may not care of his or her hygiene needs. For instance, rarely baths and does not care of his or her dental hygiene. Another symptom, delusion. A person believes on unrealistic thoughts. And hallucinations is when a person sees or hears which does not exist. Another symptom, catatonia, is when the person does repetitive or purposeless overactivity as a result of his or her disturbed mental state. Symptoms of schizophrenia appear when one of the neural circuit situated in the midbrain called substantia nigra overproduce neurotransmitter called dopamine and disrupts the balance between secretion of dopamine and acetylcholine. The treatment of schizophrenia includes medication, antipsychotic drugs such as risperidone which stops the secretion of dopamine. Physical exercise is necessary to reduce catatonic effects. Still, more studies are needed to understand deeply the mechanism of a disease.